What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the E36 M3 Drift Car Project. In today's episode, we're gonna pick up back where we left off. We're gonna get the oil pan off. We're gonna safety wire the oil pump nut. We're gonna do the Z3 pickup tube and gasket. We're gonna put the oil pan back up after some cleaning, of course. Oil pan back up, new gasket, RTV in the seams. Get everything sealed back up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll continue from there and see what else we have time for. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in order to get this oil pan off, there is a lot of what I've, if I remember correctly, these are either 10 or 13, I think they're 10 millimeter bolts. But anyways, they run along the front of the oil pan. They run all the way down the side of the oil pan and the opposite side up there. Yeah, you can see there's a lot more up there. And then there's a few weird bolts like this hidden one in here. And then there is a couple of torques along the transmission bell housing that you're gonna need to remove. Not the big ones, but like this small one, as well as that little weird one. It's kind of weird, this bolt design at the back and why they did some torques, some regular, or e-torques, I'm sorry, not regular torques, e-torques. Um, but anyways, that's kind of the gist of it. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Just, you know, take it easy. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get all these off. But before I do that, I'm gonna rip out all of this old power steering stuff because I have a bit of a surprise for that. You can probably imagine what's coming, but I'm not gonna spoil it yet, but we're gonna go ahead and take all that out just to have it out of the way. So first things first, before we remove the oil pan, I'm gonna remove the stock power steering system. And in order to do that, if you look down there, you should see one bolt that holds the reservoir in. That's the first thing we're gonna do, but we're not actually going to take that all the way out. We're just gonna loosen it because if you take it all the way out, trust me, it's a pain to get back in. So just loosen it and then you can get the reservoir out. So now this banjo fitting on the pump is the only thing still holding the reservoir into the car. Once that's off, we should be able to pull this whole thing down together and get all this nasty crap out of here and get something better in its place. Yep, we're gonna have to get this out from the top because there's actually a little bit of a lip on the reservoir that stops it from falling downward. So you have to pull it out from the top. So this could get a little messy. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm having to do is take off the intake. Not exactly what I wanted to be doing, but unfortunately that is the only way this power steering reservoir is going to come out. So, Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Just like that. Oh, goodness gracious. So, I just realized I'm definitely not gonna be able to get it out of the, uh, the bracket that holds in the reservoir unless I cut this clamp off right here. And this is one of those ear style clamps, so you have to either have the special tool or cut it or do something. Yep, got it. See, the right tools make the job. So now this should just walk right off. There we go, just like that. Straight up with it like that. Oh, geez. <laughs> I should have expected that. There we go. More fluid about to pee out. Probably. Ugh. Gross. Now we just have the lovely arduous process uh, taking every single one of these bolts out. Okay, so I just wanted to show this. You have to remove a bolt that holds the dipstick in in order for you to be able to get it out of this bracket and lift it up in order to unseat it from the oil pan. It goes right down there. You can probably see the bracket that comes off of the uh, 
tube and onto the uh, manifold piece. This is a little different because this is an M50 manifold converted car, so I'll show you the bolt that came off was this T27 Torx bolt. Yeah, this T27 Torx bolt. This was a bit of a pain in the butt, it always is. Um, you can do it, it's just, like I said, it's just tough to get tools in there, but uh, once you do that, basically all you gotta do is just grab the dipstick, pick it up, and you'll hear it unseat, and then you're good to go. You should be able to drop the pan from there. Note that there are vacuum lines attached down there. I'll unclip those just so I can completely separate the dipstick, and that'll enable me to replace the O-ring later. But uh, yeah, two more bolts and this pan's out. Let's do it. That ear right there on the power steering pump does not allow the uh, oil pan to come out. So I'm gonna loosen the bolts in the front of the power steering pump, push it forward, and then this pan should come down and I will check back in shortly. Okay, so as you can see, first things to get the power steering pump disconnected is you're gonna wanna loosen the serpentine belt. If you wanna know how to do it, you're gonna come right down here. This is gonna be difficult to see. There's a pulley right here and in the center of it, let me see if I can touch it. Yeah, that pulley right there. In the center of it, there's a 16 millimeter bolt. You're gonna need a breaker bar. I went ahead and just used this right here. Uh, this with an adapter is just a little, oh, it's not too long to be able to fit it in there. And you're gonna turn it clockwise to the right, if I'm not mistaken. You'll, you'll, you'll understand once you go to do it. That'll break the belt free. And then once you do that, like I said, I took those brackets off of the oil pump and then there should just be two more bolts. We're gonna take those out or I'm gonna take one of them out and loosen the other and I should be able to rotate the pump enough to get it out of the way. What a freaking nightmare, man. I think the pan is actually about to come down. No, I don't think, I know. So we'll support the front. It's off. And what's the verdict? It doesn't look that bad in here. What do you know? And just like that, she's free. Look at that. That's a freaking oil pan, bro. Everything actually looks pretty good in here. Yeah. So now we need to get the front bumper off to safety wire that pump nut. I really like these plastic pry bar tools for this. Just get under here, get it started. And, you know, just work your way over. There you go. I was really worried that was about to break, but it didn't. Golly, what kind of monster put that on? I know, the impact gun. All right guys, so this is the oil pump nut. As you can see, I went ahead and got the front bumper off so we could get easy access to it. All right, so it's a 17 millimeter nut and it is reverse thread. So gotta go to the right. It's gonna feel really weird, but <laughs> professional YouTuber moment. <laughs> So it's gonna feel really weird and you gotta go to the right. But, oh, it's turning the motor. No. Oh, that broke it free. Oh, it's like, no, don't tell me I just stripped the nut. <laughs> I can't even imagine how much that would suck. Uh, okay. 
Wow, I just panicked. <laughs> okay, it's off. Now I'm just gonna get a quick little. I'm gonna do that a couple times because any oil in that Loctite ain't gonna, ain't gonna do nothing. This is one of those things I ever, never, ever, ever, ever want it to come off. Okay, that's definitely not. I'm hungry. And you're gonna torque it to 17 foot pounds. That's pretty much it. So, it's pretty simple guys, like I said. You wrap it around down the bottom to the left. You're gonna need one of these safety wire plier tools, but uh, Roger is actually an aircraft mechanic, so this is nothing unfamiliar to him because this is super common in the aircraft industry. We got the safety wire done. Roger did an absolutely fantastic job. You can see I got the red Loctite on there as well. A lot of red Loctite. This thing is probably never coming off, which is exactly what you want. As you can see, he put the loop back through the, um, back through the hole. It looks fantastic, but Roger, just want to say thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And uh, now we have the fun task of reassembly of all that and all this and all that and all that. and Only, only downhill from here, right? Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, guys, that's the hardest part of the job taken care of, so let me put it back together. Okay, so now that we've got that safety wired, we need to replace the pickup tube. So it's just a couple 10 millimeter bolts. They're not very tight. So I like to break these free and then come over here and do the ones actually at the pump. I'll get you guys a better camera angle. So there's two bolts, one right here. Go ahead and break that guy free. Like I said, neither of these are gonna be that tight. And then there's one up above. This one is always a pain to get to. All right, here's how I figured out how to do it. Just like that. This is a piece of the gasket. I just went to go pull it off and it just, can you see that? Okay, so before we get this pickup tube on the car, this Z3 pickup tube, I just kind of wanted to show you guys the difference here. Um, because I know some people are probably seeing this and they've probably never heard of this. They probably have no idea that this is even a thing. So if we look right here, this is the factory pickup tube off of the car, right? And if we look, let's see if we can get it focused. If you look right here, this is where it bolts to the windage tray. And as you can see, it is completely separated from the shaft of the, um, I guess, I don't know what you'd call this, the hat, I guess. Anyways, it's attached only to the hat is what I'm trying to say. And then it's not attached here at all. So essentially this can want to flex and it can want to crack right along this edge. So BMW realized that, and uh, I'll put the part number on the screen if I remember to in editing. And this is actually a pickup tube. I don't wanna to touch it too much because I want it to be clean. This is a pickup tube, let's see. I'm gonna just use my sleeve. So this is a pickup tube from, I think, a Z3. Yeah, and as you can see, I mean, the difference becomes pretty much immediately apparent. As you can see, BMW decided that this thing needed reinforcement. And as you can see, it is not only welded to the, um, it's not only welded to that hat piece, like I had said, it is also actually welded to the tube itself. Oh yeah, there you go. There's a, there's a really good view. So that's pretty much the difference here. This one is just more susceptible, less susceptible to cracking and breaking and fatigue failure. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the gasket on and get this one swapped onto the car. So now I'm going to prep this thing with its new gasket. 
And this is going to be a little bit of a pro tip here. So if you want to be able to install something like this without having the gasket fall off on you, take a zip tie just like this. And this at least guarantees that the gasket doesn't have much room of anywhere to go. So as you can see, just do something, <laughs> oh, it's falling. Just do something just like that. And uh, yeah, and there you go. Let's go ahead and get it installed. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap here on episode five. Man, what a process to get this thing completely, or I should say the oil pan completely taken out of the car and get that oil pump nut done and get that pickup tube installed. That's uh, it's a big job. And I already had all the bolts broken free from the oil pan and even then, it's a big job. So if you're wanting to do this at home, let me take this off. If you're wanting to do this at home, um, this, is, this is totally doable. Uh, it's just set aside a lot of time to do it because there's a lot of little small things, a lot of bolts, a lot of tools that you need, and you're probably going to run into snags. I had everything I need and I kind of knew what to expect going into it because I've done this on the vert. Um, but I just want to be real, like this is like a level eight out of 10, maybe nine out of 10 on the difficulty scale of jobs to do. Um, so yeah, just kind of go into that being aware. And uh, otherwise, I mean, I would encourage anybody to try it. So, you know, you, it, it might be one of your first jobs that you do and you might learn a ton along the way to help you make all the other stuff be like, this is a breeze. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I can't even begin to tell you how much it means to me that, that you guys take your time to watch me work on my cars um, and to talk about them. I hope that you've learned something from this. Um, if you have any questions at all, or if you want a bit more explanation kind of why I'm doing this, or you want to know more about the E36 oiling system, I know a pretty good bit about it because I did a ton of learning when I was figuring out the best route for these two cars. Uh, just ask in the comments below and I'll, we'll, we'll have a good conversation about it. So thank you guys again. I hope you're having, or you're having a great day. Keep your heads up. Stay positive. Don't let your anxiety stop you from doing what you love. And uh, yeah, just keep pushing forward. Now I sound like TJ Hunt. <laughs> Anyways, y'all have a great day. I'll see you later. Peace out. Last century.